great. I am uh, Rachel Ragsdale and I make floral wreaths on the side for fun. So I thought this would be a really fun class. Um, so today all I have is just, and um, you can use any size floral wreath that you want, grapevine, whatever. This is an 18 inch grapevine wreath. So I have my um, grapevine. I have a small little bundle of flowers. You can just pick whatever you, whatever you like, make you a summer wreath or whatever. And then I just have a small, well, it's not really small, but a bundle of greenery and you don't need this much. I just like to make my wreaths kind of full um, and you can choose any greenery that you like. I like to kind of use a mixture of greenery. And then you'll want a set of pliers. So because sometimes these um, fake flowers are kind of hard to cut through because they have wire in the stem. So you'll want a good set of pliers to use because scissors don't always work well. And then I have this cool, I don't know if y'all can see it good. It's a glue pot and um, it heats up my glue for me, but you can use a glue gun. I just make so many of these that this has really came in handy because all you have to do is just dip it in and stick it in your ink. So we're gonna get started today and there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just kind of preference. You can start cutting your flat, you can, you can put your flowers in the wreath first or you can start with your greenery. I kind of like to start with the greenery. So what I do is just grab a piece of whichever one you want. So if you have your greenery with you, we'll take it. And I just start cutting little pieces off of it with my pliers, just about like this. You want a little bit of the stem that you can stick in. So I'm just gonna start cutting this up. And normally I get my greenery and my flowers. I, I go to different places. Um, usually I go to Hobby Lobby when it's, cause it's 50% off every other week. But Joann's has some really pretty artificial like silk flowers and stuff. And Michael's has some as well. So I'm just going ahead and working on this next piece of greenery. I'm cutting just little pieces of greenery off that we can stick into our wreath. And you can, if you don't have a grapevine, um, you can take an old one from home and just rip out the flowers if they kind of look bad and you can use that or you can buy some at yard sales for really cheap. So I'm just cutting up my greenery. I'm kind of just doing a little mixture. So I have two different types and I have this really pretty fern that I'm gonna cut next. It's really big and fluffy. So I'm gonna cut some of those off. And if anyone's interested in this glue pot, uh, say you make these a lot, um, I got this one off of Amazon, but I believe I saw, I saw it at Hobby Lobby too. It just comes in handy because you don't tire out your hand squeezing the glue gun. If you're making a lot of this, or if you're really crafty and make a lot of stuff using it, I really like it. I still have my glue gun though, because I need it for like little projects. All right, so I've cut up some of this type of greenery. 
I've, I've cut up some little pieces of fern. And then this kind of looks like lamb's ear, but I don't know what it is. It's kind of got like little frosted leaves on it. It's really pretty. So I've got like three different types and I can always come back and cut more. Oh, actually, I'm gonna cut this one. It's really pretty. It's got these little, I don't know if you can see it, these little pink tips on it. I thought that'd be really pretty. So I'm gonna cut a few pieces of those. Just again. So I have my four different types of greenery and I'm literally just going to um, stick it in. I'm gonna dip it in the glue or you, if you have the glue gun, you'll just put it on the stem part and then you're gonna stick it into the wreath. There's no right or wrong way to do it. I just go all the way in the same direction because it's easier on the eye. So you don't wanna stick one this way and then stick some this way. So we're just gonna go all the same direction with it and just layer it. After we stick it in our glue, we're just gonna keep going the same direction until it kind of gets a little bit full. So I'll kind of demonstrate that. And it does make a mess, so this grapevine gets everywhere. So I'm just dipping it in my glue. And then just sticking it in this way. And then just moving along and sticking my next piece of greenery. And we're just gonna do this until it gets full. And like I said, you can totally start with the flowers first if you like doing it that way better. I just have always liked doing the greenery first. All right. Just stick in little pieces in and you can go inside the reed. You can go kind of outside just different spots until it's covered. And it looks kind of crazy right now, but it's going to come together. <laughs> All right. And I was excited about doing this class because I um, make wreaths for everybody, but I don't even have one on my door right now. So I'm like, you know what? This is great because this one can go on my door when I get home. <laughs> Be a pretty summer wreath. All right. And if y'all have any questions, just let me know. I know this is kind of taking forever.
And you don't have to go all the way around. Like some people like the half wreaths where it's just, you do one side, but I kind of like mine to be really full. So I'm going all the way around with it. I'm just rotating as I go. And stick it in spots that need scenery. Rachel, we have a question in the uh, the chat, and it might be a question for everybody. I don't know how. Uh, I don't know. I have uh, problems with this too, especially in our ferns. But ask anybody know how to keep the birds from building nests in your reef? Hold on, um, let me turn it up because I can't hear very well. Let's see. Um, there we go. What was that question again? Uh, does anyone know how to keep the birds from building nests in your reef? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know, because I had a lady I made a wreath for send me a picture just recently. It was like a couple days ago, and she had a bird that built a nest in her reef. So I don't know how you would keep that from happening. That's a good question, though. I guess they just feel safe because it's so like high up and they can. See, it's already getting kind of full. We're making progress. And if you already have your stuff like pre cut, like it takes no time. Now that it's getting kind of full, you can either add more greenery to it and keep going, or we can add some of our um, flowers next and go in at the end and fill in all the spots. And if you like um, bows, you could always put a bow on this, you can glue it, or I like to zip tie my bows to the wreath, like find like a good spot. Like if I'm putting the bow up here at the top, I'll find like where I wanna put it. And then I'll just take a zip tie and kind of hide it where you can't see the zip tie. So it stays on really good. Or some people just glue it to the grapevine and it stays usually. But I, I found that the zip tie works really well for that. So I think I'm about almost out of greenery. What I've cut, not out of greenery, but I'm just and I thought these ferns were really pretty for like a summer spring wreath. But a lot of times I'll use at like Hobby Lobby, I'll buy like a bush of like eucalyptus or Lamb's ear, I really like the lamb's ear. I think it's pretty.
And this is a good like gift idea for someone for Christmas. Because everyone loves, you know, getting a wreath as a gift. All right. So I know it's not fully covered yet. You can still see the grapevine, which I don't really like because I like mine to look really full. But that's what I have so far, all going in the same direction. I don't know if y'all can see it good. So I'm gonna pause with the greenery. We can always come back to it. But I wanna start adding in my flowers next in some of these spots that you can see. So sometimes I'll cluster them together. Like I'll put like two right next to each other. Or sometimes I'll just like kind of pop one here, one here just like all the way around. So I have with me, these are, I think these are poppies. I love poppies. Those are poppies. And I have this really pretty blue color that I was gonna pop in there in some of the spots. And then some pretty like white roses. And then I have these, I think these are anemones. So I'm just gonna start cutting some of my flowers and I'll show you how I kind of cut them fairly short, not super long because they're just going straight in like this, just straight down. So you'll put your glue on it and just put it straight in like where it's peeking out. So you don't need them very long. So I'll just dip this in some glue and just start filling in spots like so and just pushing it down. Like I said, you can cluster some to pieces together, do like two or three next to each other, or you can kind of spread them out. However, you like it. So I'm just gonna work on cutting some flowers right now that I can use. And you can even use the greenery that comes on the flowers if you like it sometimes. It's not very pretty, but if it kind of goes with the greenery that you've picked, you can keep some of these to use or just use the flowers. I'm just cutting random first. About how much did all your supplies cost, Rachel? That's a good question. So I usually, if I go into, like say I bought all this from Hobby Lobby, which this is just stuff I had at the house. I would say if I'm making someone one of these, um, the grapevine, the bundle of greenery, a bundle of flowers at Hobby Lobby when it's like 50% off can runs me normally around, I would say 30 to $50 depending on what I pick. Cause some flowers cost, you know, more than others. But I think you can make one for, around like 30. So not too, not too bad. And cheaper, you know, if you find, you know, sometimes you can find silk flowers for like 75% off or really marked down. It all just depends on what you pick. But I would say this one would co oh, cost me probably 40 with the supplies I'm using. But if you find like, like I said earlier, if you find like a grapevine laying around your house that's kind of old that you can pick the flowers out, that, that'll save you money right there. 
is you won't have to buy one. You can just buy the, the flowers and the greenery. I think these are pretty. I had these at the house. They're those anemone flowers. They're like the Navy Center. I'm gonna put some of those in there. And this should last you if you put it like on your, if your front porch is pretty shaded, it'll last a while. Now, if it's in direct sunlight, it'll fade eventually. But if you have it like inside or like I said, if it's, if your porch is shaded, this should last a while. All right, so I have my flowers cut. So I'm just gonna start popping them in. I think we're good on time. I don't wanna run out of time. All right. So yeah, I have all of them cut up right here. And I'm just gonna start adding them to all the spots that we need filled. And let me know if y'all can't see good. There's another question in the chat, Rachel. Can you mount uh, glue sticks in the melting pot? You can. I actually do that all the time. You can. Um, they sell the, the glue dots or that you can just, I just throw in glue sticks in. And it has like a low and high setting on it. But this thing, it's, it really comes in handy if you're making a lot of these. I can't remember how much it was off of Amazon. This one's called a Sir Bonder. If y'all are interested in it, works really well. I've also seen people take like a little mini skillet and use that and turn it into a glue pot like a little tiny electric one, and I'll put glue sticks in that. I'm popping those really pretty blue ones in right now. And now that we're getting into summer, you can use really pretty summer colors like oranges, pinks. That would be really pretty as well. Or you can just, you know, if you just are into the greenery wreaths, you could just do all of it greenery, and leave the flowers out and just fill Fill it up all the way until it's full. But this is mine so far, it's coming along. I've still got spots I need to fill up, but it's coming along nicely. And for some reason, this straight vine is very messy. I've never had one this messy. It's getting everywhere.
And does anyone get their silk flowers from places other than Hobby Lobby or Michael's? Because that's just where I go. I didn't know if there's any like good places to order online. Because I know you can get everything off of like Amazon and I just didn't know about the quality. I just like going to Hobby Lobby because I can pick out ones that I like in person. But I'm sure there's online sites too if you don't want to get out that you can buy some flowers from. Does anyone have any questions so far? I know we're about to run out of time. I'm watching the clock to make sure I'm not going over. So the rest of this time, I'm just gonna start adding, um, I might cut up some more greenery. I have still have a lot over here that I can use and just keep filling in those spots that are kind of still showing a little bit. I might put some inside of it, stick some like this way, um, but I'm just gonna keep filling in those spots until it's as full as I want it. But um, that's really all that you do is just keep filling in until you get it how you want it. Okay, so I see if you ever put ornaments or like ribbons on it. Is there any tips and tricks for that? What'd you say? Um, during the holidays, do you ever put any ornaments or like uh, ribbons on like throughout the uh, the wreath? Is there any tips and tricks on that? Yeah, um, so sometimes I'll make Christmas wreaths for people and um, they'll have, they'll sell, I forgot what they call them at Hobby Lobby. They, they're made for like wreaths and things like that, but they're these little sticks. Um, you can find them. Like, you know what I'm talking about when you put them in the Christmas tree, those little stick things. Yeah. That some of them are ornaments, snowman, just like different, like Christmas themed ones. I don't know if I'm explaining that good or not. They call, but, I think they call them picks. Yes, yes. picks. Yes, exactly. Because you can make anything out of them. You, some people put them in their Christmas trees. Um, I will buy those sometimes. If um, someone wants one with ornaments or snowmen or Santa, and I'll stick those in and I just use the glue for them. But um, you can attach stuff in with zip ties or like I said, glue. I have, I don't make a lot of Christmas wreaths so though. I normally do the spring ones. When you do like the ornaments and the different snowmen and things, the picks, uh, do you just put them in from the side or do you put them straight down? I um, I kind of do them like the flowers. I just put them straight down. Thank you. Yeah. Like I'll get my base first and then I'll start adding the picks in just straight down. I'm just cutting some more greenery because <laughs> I think mine still has some spots that are showing through.
Does anyone have any questions? I know it's it's 1039, so I don't want to go over my time. I hope this was helpful. Like I said, there's no wrong, right or wrong way to do it. Um, I just I just prefer this way because it's easy for me, but you might like doing your flowers first or what a, um, whatever, but um, I just think this way is pretty easy. It's very pretty and we have uh, lots of comments in the chat that says uh, they like them. It's so spring looking. And then we might, all, I know some were following along. So if they have time to share those, um, we want to see those as well. So yes, please, please. I want to see what you guys came up with. Oh, I, I see Carol's in the, she did a half wreath. I like that. And they're orange and yellow, pretty spring colors as well. Pretty. Uh, I love the half ones. And Teresa did a half one as well. And I, I think those are hydrangeas. He's not full screen on mine, uh, but it's pretty as well. And a uh, white and pink. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yes, I love the hydrangeas. Did you get those from Hobby Lobby? You're on mute, mute Teresa. Yeah, you're on mute, Teresa. Sorry. No, you're fine. I got all of this at uh, Hobby Lobby. I'm in there. Oh, That's gorgeous. Uh, the co colors are blush and that really pretty spring green. Oh, that's pretty. What kind of greenery did you use? I'm just using the greenery that came in a tin bungee. Oh, yeah. Now, how, how much do you think that one cost you to make? Well, like you said, they're 50% off. Mm -hmm. and so I think the wreath was $7.99. And so I got it for about four. And then the mm -hmm. two bunches of hydrangeas were, uh, I want to say $13.99. So I got like seven or eight. Oh, cool. So, you know, less, less than $20. Yeah, see, and that's not bad. That's not, not bad at all. And and I like that you can custom it to what you want. Um, like you can pick the colors and everything that you like. That's why I think this is such a good gift idea for someone because you know you can make them um, a wreath with their favorite flowers in it or favorite colors. But that's so pretty. Hey, Rachel, oh, come on. Here's a Barbara bracket. Oh my goodness, how beautiful. Is that poppies? Poppies with calla lilies. Oh, that's gorgeous. My, I love the red. My late husband painted red poppies years ago. So oh, that is gorgeous. Thank you. I love it. I didn't see the one um, that you said they did oranges. I didn't see that one. Were they on? Did they have their screen on? Uh, Miss Carol, you might I don't not know if I saw that one. A new brew bar. Can you can you unmute Miss Carol and say something? And that might uh make you big on Rachel's screen. Yeah, this is this is it. I think I want to add some. Um, ribbon but i don't have the right ribbon right now oh my gosh that is gorgeous that's like the perfect summer colors too now are those oranges yeah they're that's gorgeous are they like the little picks 
No, it came in a, like a flower bunch. I mean, I went really inexpensive <laughs> with it. And uh, the oranges and the lemons were already wrapped in that. So I just cut them up separately so I could put them where I wanted them. That's really pretty. I love that. Yeah, you, a ribbon would be really pretty, like hanging from like the top part. I love that. Love all the summer colors. Had to put in uh, an announcement that says we have about five minutes. Does anybody else have any more questions for Rachel? Well, I'm still working on mine, y'all, but it's coming together. It's beautiful. It's it's coming. I'm gonna probably add a few more flowers and some greenery, but very spring, summer, neutral. I should have done some fun colors like you guys, like the oranges and. So much fun with you guys today. I'm so glad that y'all got to make some pretty reads if y'all don't have any questions for me. Or if you think of something, you can email me, whatever. We really appreciate you, Rachel. Um, and if y'all, yeah. I think Rachel is almost done with hers and she showed us her pretty. Yeah. Uh, so if y'all want to go back to the um, main room you can just press the leave room in the blue um rachel might be able to hang around for a couple more minutes in case you have any questions um but i'm going to stop recording now and we appreciate you all and we appreciate you rachel for being thank there. you guys y'all were awesome i hope that was thank helpful you. thank you so much